God is love and merciful. So everyone's going to go to heaven, right? We're going to look at that question and many others today in our daily devotion. It's February 2nd, 2020. I'm Pastor John Blevins, and I'm glad you're here with us today. Or pre-posting today's devotion for tomorrow is the Lord's Day, February 2nd. So for those who'd like to watch the devotion a day early, uh, it is here for you to watch. For those who'd be looking tomorrow, I pray that you are enjoying the Lord's Day and that you are delighting in the day that the Lord has given you, but also in our great God. Well, let's start today's devotion in God's Word. Turning to Jude, I'm going to read Jude verses 3 through 7. Beloved, although I was very eager to write you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels, who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. These verses from Jude are, are part of uh, several passages that are brought together by the pastors and theologians uh, who created the Westminster Confession of Faith, Larger and Shorter Catechisms. For, for today's theology section, we're going to be turning to Westminster Confession of Faith, back to chapter 3 of God's Eternal Decree, chapter 3, reading section 7. The rest of mankind God was pleased according to the unsearchable counsel of his own will, whereby he extendeth or withholdeth mercy as he pleaseth, for the glory of his sovereign power over his creatures, to pass by and to ordain them to dishonor and wrath for their sin, to the praise of his glorious justice. God is love. God is merciful. So is everybody going to heaven? Those who teach a universalistic salvation, are they, are they right? Well, the Bible teaches otherwise. As you move your way through the scriptures, not just the few verses we read from Jude, but throughout all the scriptures, it is clear that there is a hell and that not everyone is going to be in heaven with God, but that some will not be saved and they will go to hell. And this is, this is, it's clear, but it's something that oftentimes is difficult and hard for me to talk about. And we've even seen in our day how those claiming the name of Christian, uh, some have even distanced themselves from the truth about hell and, and God's justice and punishment of sin. So much so that uh, some names that if I were to say them right now, you probably would, would recognize them, uh, sadly have, have rejected what the scriptures teach and have moved more towards what the church has always recognized as heresy and, and false teaching, uh, which is this idea that no matter what, everybody is going to be saved. Or there are some sects and cults and groups that even teach that though someone may not be saved in this life, in the next, that while they are in spirit prison or, or hell, however you may, may think of it, that even at that point, they'll be able to have the opportunity to realize, oh, I was wrong. And then make that choice to go to heaven. But that's not what the Bible reveals to us. And in fact, it's a very sobering 
when we look at the reality. Now, on one hand, there is so much to praise God for regarding his mercy and the fact that no one deserves, no one deserves. Christian, if you're watching this right now, you don't deserve God's loving mercy and salvation. All of mankind, because of sin, deserves to be looked past. But out of God's own free will and his loving mercy, he chose for himself a people. We've talked about that as we've, we've looked at it, and it's, it's much to praise God for. But, but here in this section and in these verses we read the reality, the sobering reality, that not all have been chosen, that God has overlooked others, leaving them in their sins, leaving them so that his justice might go forth in their punishment for their sin, as Christ did not pay for that sin debt on the cross. And there's, there's a sobering note to see here, as we read in Jude, that, that some of these folks even creep into the church. And so it's not a guarantee just because someone's a member of a church or even because someone ends up having some sort of influential position with the name of Christian next to them, whether it's in the church, whether it's in culture, whether it's in the civil government, you name it. Just because someone is influential, famous, and says they're a Christian does not in and of itself guarantee that the Lord has saved that person. Because there are false teachers, wolves that rise up from within, and that's what we saw in Jude. Those who come in, and, and they're identifiable. In First uh, First John, we read of, of the, the easiest test is the fact that they teach against the Scriptures. So it's clear, oftentimes, who these false teachers are, even though they draw away folks to listen to them, uh, and they do much damage to the name of Christ. It's very sad that even within the church, there are those whom the Lord has not saved. And, and there is no... Let's not leave that sitting on the shelf there. There is no guarantee that just because you are in a church, just because you go to church, just because your parents take you to church, or you went to church a few times in your life, or maybe two times a year you show up because it's the culturally correct thing to do because of uh, different celebrations and seasons, those are not guarantees for salvation. Walking through the doors of a church building, that, that doesn't make one a Christian. But as we read this in Jude, and as we read our, our theology portion, uh, bringing all these things together, again, it, it points us to the reality of, yes, God is merciful, but God is just. And as sobering as God's holiness and justice is, that it causes us to, to rightfully fall on our face in awe. Let us thank God that he is just. Can you imagine living in a universe that was not created and ruled and sustained by a just God, but instead by a God that looked more like man? Sometimes just, other times not. You don't really ever know where you stand. Flip-flopping, no standard, no truth, no consistency. Thank the Lord that that is not who God is. But yes, God is merciful, God is just. So today, praise him for that, think about it, and let it, let it not only motivate your desire to worship him, but let it motivate your desire to share the gospel with others. For again, as we've looked at, we have no idea who the elect are, so share the gospel with everyone you come in contact with. Build relationships, love God, love your neighbors. Oh Lord, we thank you for today, even as Many are worshiping you as some are looking forward to tomorrow, depending upon where they are in the world and when they're watching this. Lord, let us delight in you on the day that you've given so that you might be glorified in all things. Amen. Well, it's good to be with you as we are into a new month with our daily devotions. So if you are appreciating these, like, subscribe, click notification, and look for the new and upcoming videos on the channel.